In this video, I want to continue working a couple of partial fraction decomposition problems. Now, in the first video, we considered only partial fraction decompositions where the denominator factored into distinct linear factors. In this video, I'm going to look at two examples that include decompositions with repeated linear factors. Okay, for repeated linear factors, each factor that is in the form ax plus b, that quantity raised to the power of m, has the partial fraction decomposition that must include the following sum of m fractions. Okay, so what we see is that we'll need to include the repeated factor over and over for each whole number value of the exponent from 1 all the way up to m, where m is the highest exponent for that linear factor. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the example that we have. This is the first one. So we have this rational expression, 3x squared plus 2x plus 1, all over, and this is x plus 1 cubed. So this is already in factored form, so that's really nice because we don't have to worry about it. And what we see is this m value here is 3, so this x plus 1 actually is occurring three times. Now, I don't have any other uh, factors down here in the denominator, so I'm only going to focus on this x plus 1. Okay, so what will these denominators need to be? Well, I'm going to start with x plus 1 to the power of 1. Okay, and that numerator needs to be a because this is linear. And then I'm going to do x plus 1 squared and I can use b, and then I need to do the final one, x plus 1 cubed, and then I can use c for that. Okay, so this m value is 3, so the highest power is 3, so I'm just going to use this x plus 1 once, twice, three times. Okay, and so I have the a, the b, and the c uh, are my constants for the numerators right now. Okay, so I'm going to kind of take the same approach as I did the last video. I'm going to get this common denominator, which is x plus 1 quantity cubed. And I'm going to uh, ask myself, well, this one has one of the x plus 1s. So what's he missing? Well, he's missing two more. So I'm going to say a times x plus 1 squared. Okay, well, what, this b in the numerator, what's he missing in the denominator? Well, he's just missing one of the x plus 1s, so he needs one more because he's already got two. And then our c over here, he uh, already has the common denominator, so he does not need to be multiplied by anything else. So, c. Okay, and what will this numerator ultimately equal? Well, this is from our original rational expression, 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay, so if we take the same approach as we did in the previous video, I'm going to choose a value of x so I can eliminate one of these variables and uh, kind of work my way through. The problem I see, though, is that x plus 1, x plus 1, oh, these are the same. So if I choose a value for x that will make this 0, well, in fact, it's going to be negative 1. It'll actually cancel out a lot of stuff, but maybe that's a good thing. Let's see. So x is negative 1. So a times negative 1 plus 1 squared plus b times negative 1 plus 1 plus c equals 3 times negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 plus 1. Okay, so I just put that negative 1 in for all the x's. Okay, well negative 1 plus 1 is 0, so that cancels. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0, so that cancels. Okay, it looks like uh, I have c all by itself here, so c equals negative 1 squared is 1, so 3, and then minus 2 plus 1. So it looks like c equals, what, 2? Okay, well that was pretty easy finding that first one. The problem is, what am I going to plug in now to get rid of, you know, c or b so I can get solved for a? Okay, well we don't have anything um, that's obvious, so now we're just going to choose another value of x. 
So let's choose uh, 0 for x. Okay, because 0 is always nice. So let's go back up to the original and let's put zeros in for all of these x's. Okay, well, it's going to be a times 0 plus 1 squared plus b times 0 plus 1 plus, well, c, but I know c is 2, and plus, or equals now 3 times 0 squared plus 2 times 0 plus 1. Okay, well, that goes away and that goes away. Okay, so let's look closely at what I have left and um, what I can do from here. So 0 plus 1 is 1, squared is 1, so this whole thing just comes out to be a. 0 plus 1 is 1 times, okay, so that whole thing just comes out to be b, equals, and now when I subtract 2 from both sides, I get negative 1. Okay, well, it doesn't automatically seem like this gave me a value for a or b, but what it did do is it gave me an equation that relates just a and b together with a number. So how did I get that? Well, I plugged in 0 for x, so 0 wasn't going to eliminate anything necessarily to help me solve directly for a, b, or c, but it did give me a nice relationship here. So I wonder if I did this again with maybe positive 1, what I could do. Okay, so let's do this process one final time and then see what I have. So for x equals 1, let's plug it in here. So a times 1 plus 1 squared plus b times 1 plus 1 plus c, well I know c was 2, okay, equals 3 times 1 squared uh, plus 2 times 1 plus 1. Okay, so 1 plus 1 is 2, squared is 4a plus 2b, okay, equals, and then I can subtract this 2 again from over here. So when I do this, I'll have 3 plus 2 is 5, 6 minus 2 is 4. Okay. Well, now I have yet another equation that relates a and b together to a number. So what I have here, and I'll just circle these two equations now, what I have here is a nice system of equations. Two equations, two unknown values. So let's go ahead and put this system together, put the equations in the system together, and uh, let's solve the system. And it might be, uh, el elimination might be easiest, I don't really know, so let's multiply the top one by negative 2. So negative 2a minus 2b equals 2, 4a plus 2b equals 2, I'm sorry, 4 actually, eh, that's why we don't use pen in math. Okay, so the b's will cancel, so 2a equals 6, and a equals 3. Hey, right there. So I have the value of C, which I got early on, and now I have the value of A. Okay, so let's plug that back into one of these. A plus B equals negative 1. So 3 plus B equals negative 1. So B equals negative 4 when I subtract 3 from both sides. Okay, so let's jump way back up here to the top where I had my original uh, decomposition expressions, so a and b and c over each of the denominators. Now I know what those values of a, b, and c are, so let's go ahead and plug them in. Okay, so my original rational uh, expression was 3x squared plus 2x plus 1, and that's all over x plus 1 cubed, so that is a over x plus 1, so 3 over x plus 1. My b value is negative 4, so I'm going to say minus 4 over x plus 1 squared. My value of c was positive 2, so plus 2 x plus 1 quantity cubed. Alrighty, so there is my partial fraction decomposition for this first example. Okay, so here in the second example, I have this rational expression, 50x over 
And then we have this x cubed minus 4x squared minus 3x plus 18. Okay, so when I look at this, it does not appear that I can use factor by grouping because 1 is multiplied by negative 4, but negative 3 is not multiplied by negative 4 to get 18. Okay, so the next logical approach then would be to think about the rational root theorem. And uh, the leading coefficient is 1, the constant is 18. So I'm just uh, going to consider factors of 18 uh, for this. So I know that 3 will work. So let's go ahead and try 3, and I'll just show you that when I plug 3 into this, I'll get 27 minus, okay, so 3 squared is 9, times 4 is minus 36, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 18, so minus 9, minus 9 is uh, negative 18, plus 18 is 0. So since I plug 3 in, and I got 0, I know that x minus 3 will be a factor, so let's go ahead and uh, we can use synthetic division real quick and just take that 3 out. So negative 4, negative 3, 18. Okay, so bring that rascal down 1, 3, negative 1, negative 3, negative 6, negative 18, and our remainder is 0, which is nice. So what I'm left with here is x squared minus x minus 6 which that will factor nicely. Okay, so I have a few factors. I have this x minus 3 up here, another x minus 3, and then an x plus 2. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this now. So my 50x all over, and what I have here is x plus 2, and then x minus 3 quantity squared. Okay, so I have another repeated factor, but I also have another guy in there as well. So that's okay. Now let's just draw some lines here. Just kind of separate our work out. Okay, so again, this was just the rational root theorem I needed because I needed some way to factor this denominator and it didn't work for grouping. So this was probably the next best and quickest route. Okay, so here we go. So how are we going to set up our, our basics here? So I know that I need an x plus 2. So I'll just put him with an A. And because this value here is a 2, that's kind of our M. So I need to include x minus 3 to the first and x minus 3 to the second. So I'll do a B and a C right there. Okay? So I know this is my common denominator, this x plus 2 and then multiplied by x minus 3 quantity squared. My numerator is 50x. Okay, so as far as this a, this first fraction is concerned, what is he missing? Well, he's got the x plus 2, but he's missing this uh, x minus 3 quantity squared. Okay, so the second one, uh, the b one, has an x minus 3, but he's only got one of them. So he's missing the x plus 2 with a second x minus 3. And the C then has two of the x minus 3's, but he's missing an x plus 2. And of course, all of this equals 50x. Okay, probably kind of hard to get all this in one line, so I'll kind of keep dancing it around back and forth. There we go. Okay, so I have two obvious choices here for x, positive 3 and negative 2. So let's start with positive 3. Okay. So a times 3 minus 3 squared plus b times, and this is going to be 3 plus 2 times 3 minus 3 plus c, 3 plus 2 equals 150. Okay, so this guy cancels, 3 minus 3, that guy cancels. Alrighty, so it looks like I have 5c equals 150, so c must equal 30. Okay, well, not bad, not bad. Okay, so the next obvious one that we were going to use was negative 2. So if x equals negative 2, we'll kind of start back from our original. So a times negative 2 minus 3 squared plus b times negative 2 plus 2 
and then the negative 2 minus 3 plus C, well I know that's 30 and then it's minus 2 plus 2 equals 50 times negative 2. Okay, so again this negative 2 plus 2 goes away and similar to that one. So what I'm left with is, okay, so negative 2, negative 3 is negative 5 squared is 25a equals, looks like negative 100, so a should be negative 4, okay. So if I know I have two of the values, I have 30 for c and I have negative 4 for a, well, there wasn't uh, something to get b by itself because every time when I plug 3 in or negative 2, my b went away. So I'm going to have to choose a third value that will not cancel the b out. So again, maybe like 0. So let's do x equals 0. Okay, and what will that look like now? Okay, so we're going to use, go back here and use this first one again. Now I'm going to plug 0 in everywhere. So I'm not going to be able to write and show you that at the same time. So you just have to take my word for it here. So a times 0 minus 3 squared plus b times 0 plus 2 times 0 minus 3 plus c 0 plus 2 equals 50 times 0. Okay. So this 0 minus 3 squared makes 9a, but I knew my a was negative 4. Uh, the 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, so minus 6b, that's what we're solving for. 0 plus 2 is 2, and c is 30, and that equals 0, because 50 times 0 is 0. Okay, so negative 36 minus 6b plus 60 equals 0. So 60 minus 36 is going to be 24 minus 6b equals 0. Negative 6b equals negative 24b equals 4. Okay, well I've got all the values now. Okay, so we'll jump back up here. I knew that I had a, b, and c for numerators, and these were the respective denominators. So let's go ahead and do our final thing. So I know that 50x all over x cubed minus 4x squared minus 3x plus 18 has a partial fraction decomposition of a, which is negative 4 over x plus 2, plus b, which is 4 over x minus 3, and then plus c, which is 30, over x minus 3 squared. Okay, so there is uh, what this partial fraction decomposition will look like for the second example, which included not only a repeated linear factor, but also another distinct one along with it as well.